morning. I'm a bit late this morning. I do apologise. I knew it had to happen at one point, but uh, <laughs> still can't find the charger for my watch. And my son was playing on my phone and I just lost track of time. I do apologise. Um, anyway, so like Wing, I'm going to try and make the most of the city outside for as long as I can. Um, mainly because our house is in <laughs> various states of disarray after moving. Um, but it's quite cold today. I've got, I've got a coat on. It is quite cold. And Luna's in the background somewhere, uh, wandering around the garden. Um, but that's not what we're here for. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. Um, we've got a big chunk to read today. So I'm not actually going to read it to you. Um, I will put in the comments um, the, the chunk of passage that uh, we're looking at today, um, just so that, you know, please go and read it, you know, because it's it's quite central to um, the, the part of the story that we're up to. Um, obviously, we're into the last week of Jesus's life, and it, this is, it's all go from, from, from now on, kind of, well, from yesterday, I think it was last Sunday yesterday, was it? Um, so it's, it's literally all go. So today um, it's headed in my book as Jesus is arrested. Now, right from the very beginning of this gospel, we've seen that um, the, the law, the leaders of the law, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, they're all trying to, they're trying to, been trying to trick Jesus. They've been trying to get him to say things that are blasphemous, that to go against God. Um, they're trying to trick him in any way. Gosh, that's noisy, isn't it? Um, and now they finally got one of the disciples to betray him. Now I think that is just it's just awful. One of his closest friends went to the went to the leaders and said, I will tell you who's which one is Jesus if you give me a lot of money. And fair play, it was a lot of money. I know a lot of people say, like, you know, how how could how could Judas do it? But the amount of money that he was given for doing it was a lot. And I'm not going to spoil the story. I'm not going to give you any spoilers about what happens to Judas afterwards. Um, but, you know, he was swayed by a lot, a lot of money. So, so here now, it's after the Last Supper and Jesus um, goes and goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, just before that, um, he says, everybody's going to desert me. You're all going to leave me. And Peter says, no, no way. Absolutely no way. Everyone else might leave you, but I will not. I will stand by you no matter what. And Peter meant it. Pe Peter meant it. But Jesus says to him, I'm telling you, by the end of tonight, by, by, by tomorrow morning, you will have denied knowing me three times. So not just once, not just twice, but three times. And Peter's like, no way, absolutely not. No way, I will not. And then, so they go to, they go to the garden and Jesus, there's just this complete change, change in Jesus' personality. You know, he's, he, he just becomes more human possibly because all of a sudden, the whole weight of what's about to happen to him kind of catches up with him possibly. And he's crying in the garden saying, you know, God, please, Father, if there's, if there's any way that you can take this from me, if we can do it any other way, please, please, can we do it our way? You know, and it's just, Jesus is God. Jesus is God. And it's just, at this point, he's human. I mean, how many of us would have been exactly the same? I mean, to be honest, I don't think I would have got to this point before breaking down, you know? But he, he does, and he, he's, he's begging, he's begging God, you know, if there is any other way, because he knows that he's gonna die. He knows it's gonna hurt. He knows he's gonna be betrayed and left all on his own. And he's gonna have to go with it, not just by his disciples, but by God as well. God is gonna leave him on his own for the duration that he is on the cross and that's you know for Jesus has never ever known that he's never ever known that and it's all catching up with him 
and he just begs him and says, please, if there's any other way. And I don't think he's ever been more human at this point, because I think any one of us, all of us would have done the same. But Jesus loves us so much that when God said, no, this is the only way, he said, okay. And then the guards turn up in the garden and they've brought swords and a big, big load of, um, of soldiers and with swords and everything. And Jesus, this big massive overreaction, because Jesus is like, you know, I'm here, take me. You know, and Peter, who, who, is, who was so adamant before that he was not gonna leave him, he's so cross. And he pulls out his sword and he chops off one of the soldier's ears. And now it's quite a thing, Mark doesn't actually mention his name. He just says one of the bystanders, bystanders. Bystanders? Bystanders. What's the, what's the word? bystanders whatever the word is anyway um, <laughs> mark doesn't name him but the other, the other gospel writers do um, so we know we know that it's, it was peter and he chops the chops the guy's ear off and jesus just picks the ear up off the off the ground and sticks it back and he says put your swords away you know don't fight and he just goes because he knows this is his duty this is what he came to earth for and what he came to earth for was me was you was every single one of us and do you know the thing that keeps me going when I think of you know uh, like when I feel down on myself uh, when I've got you know like quite low self-confidence or self-esteem or whatever and I think do you know what Jesus did it for me for me it doesn't matter if there had been anybody else in the world, Jesus would have still done it just for me. And that's how much he loves me. He loves me so much that so here he is in the garden begging God any other way, please, 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 just let us do it any other way. And when God says no, he says, okay, that's fine. I'll still, I'll do it. And he, he does, spoiler alert, he's <laughs> coming up and he does. And he did that for me because he loves me so much. And he didn't just do it for me, he did it for you. Because he loves you so, so much. And it doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter how low your confidence is, whether you believe it or not, Jesus loves you as you are. And he did this to save you. And that, for me, is the most mind-blowing thing ever and I'm gonna leave it there because I've waffled for long enough and there is no other point that I can make apart from the fact I'll just repeat it before I go Jesus loves you have a great morning